this incredible story of strangers helping people and putting their life on the line to help these kids. There was, a, there was an interview that, that the boys did on, on one of the daytime TV shows and one of the kids that they rescued said, we didn't know you, you were strangers and you were willing to put your life in danger to get us out. And it really just touched me so much. I thought, my God, that's the kind of hopeful story that I think everyone, it really touches everyone. Doesn't matter who you are, what country you're in. Chris, I didn't know this until talking to him. He'd never done a rescue dive before. Um, he was on the he was on the committee, um, but he was kind of more of an admin guy. Um, and he told me that he was actually thinking of stepping down because he, he likes to be practical and be in the cave doing things. Um, so he said he was really looking for an opportunity to prove himself. Um, and Rick and John knew that, and they they said, "Well, let's let's give Chris a shot because um, he's a very very talented diver. He proved himself numerous times. He'd, he'd done expositions himself, um, organizing them. Um, so he was the least experienced of them in that he'd never done a rescue dive, but he had done many many cave dives. So it's um, yeah, it was kind of trial by fire. I mean, it's talk about being thrown in at the deep end. He he really was uh, tested to the max on his first go. This is what's so wonderful about this story. He's just an everyday guy. Um, he doesn't have any uh, sort of special th things about him. You know, he's just a, a, an everyday man. Um, but his hobby is almost unrelatable, you know, because the panic and the fear that we would you know, all have being in a small confined space underwater. That's where he finds his peace and his quiet and, and that's his that's his happy place really. Um, and it was a little bit of a, a journey to get my head into that because as soon as I got into the little cave underwater, I just started to panic straight away. But slowly over the weeks training with it, um, I found actually it is really fun and enjoyable. So um, I've managed to bridge that gap a little bit. I think Vigo is one of the uh, most focused um, actors I've ever worked with, his attention to the smallest detail, not just about what he's doing, it's about what everyone's doing. Um, he wants to know how everything's working and sort of see this this picture in his mind. Um, and he's almost got like no ego to him at all. You know, it's a real pleasure working with him because he just wants to get involved all the time. We have this joke that every time, you know, we do we all do a dive through a tunnel. Vigo's sort of just in there first. He's the first guy in, he's just sort of so hands-on. Um, he practices his fin technique in the swimming pool in the hotel. Like he's really just an amazing hard worker um, and just sort of a wonderful, relaxed, uh, gentle man. I'm always interested, interested in art reflecting life in a way. And I remember the more research I did into Chris and the group um, of divers that, that are doing this rescue, I realized the parallels are quite amazing because Chris felt um, like, you know, he'd been diving uh, for a long time. He was very competent and knew that he loved doing it and knew how to do it. Uh, but he idolized these guys who'd been doing it for a lot longer than, than him. Um, and that's kind of the same with me. You know, when I got cast in this, I was going, my God, it's Viggo Mortensen and Colin Farron and Joel Edgerton and uh, Ron Howard. And I get to be part of this team. Um, and it was something that I was aware at first. I was thinking, oh, you know, don't don't be um, don't be starstruck by them or anything. You know, they're your colleagues. But that is exactly what Chris felt. You know, he said, "My God, I'm actually on a dive now with these guys that I've admired for years. I'm part of it. I need to prove myself, but I know I can do it." And uh, yeah, it's quite a wonderful parallel. I think something I can draw on. I mean, it was uh, we started from basic, just in a very big open pool. Um, got an amazing team. Andy, who's our dive master, and his team. Um, we all get our own um, stunt double and dive trainer. Mine's a wonderful guy called Kenny. Um, and they just went through from the most basic, we're gonna go down, get comfortable with the water, then you have to sort of learn how to like evacuate your mask, um, change rigs underwater. Um, and then they slowly got us into smaller and smaller spaces. So we got used to the real small proximity um, of underwater diving, taking away our visibility. Um, until before you know it, you know, you think, oh, only 10 days ago, I was I was panicked just about being in a pool. And now I'm cramming myself through this tiny space underwater. You've got to, at times you get properly, I got really, really stuck um, about my fifth dive. I got properly stuck. I couldn't go forward or go backwards. I didn't know what was stuck. And I was thinking, this is it. This is where I, this is where I die in a pool in Australia. Well, with Rick and Jason, it was kind of the, it's wonderful having them on set because just the practicalities, as actors constantly in a scene, the script is so bare and stripped back um, in terms of dialogue. There is, they're not huge character pieces 
in terms of dialogue. It's just what's happening in between moments, the looks that you have and energy. And just hearing from them just how tired they were, what they did in their downtime. Because quite a lot of the time we'll be playing a scene that we're all just quietly sat having some food. And, I, and just to be able to know what was going through your mind, were you scared at this point? You know, after your first dive, were you a bit calmer? Um, the truth of the matter is, Jason said, he said, look, we were scared the whole time. He said, you wouldn't have known it. You know, we, we were focused. He goes, but of course, we were terrified. I think the most daring idea for the rescue was to sedate these boys and dive them out. Um, ultimately, Rick has sort of, he said to us many times, what they thought they were gonna do really is dive out dead bodies. You know, it, that it was a retrieval mission to, to, to bring their bodies out. That's what he's had to do many times in his career as a rescue diver is go in and, and, and bring out bodies. The idea of bringing that many kids, the idea of finding them alone was, was crazy. Uh, and the idea of bringing them out one by one, um, the fact that they got them all out was an absolute miracle. I think Ron is one of the uh, warmest, most wonderful people I've ever met. He's, uh, he's constantly happy, excited, hardworking, creative. You see him walk up, we were talking this morning, he's got this way of, He's almost always looking for the frame where his camera can go. So he kind of walks around with his hands like this and just sees something and imagines it. He's constantly working, but he doesn't make it look hard. He never sort of stresses. He makes it look like it's fun all the time. Working with the Thai cast is amazing because they're so, uh, they're beautiful people. And, and we commented very early on all of, uh, all of the actors who are from, you know, Western actors. Um, just the difference in their energy, they're so, uh, they all applaud at the end of each, as soon as you say that scene complete, all of them, it doesn't matter if they're background artists or anything, they clap and they're really excited about it. It's such an important story for them. Um, and you can see the enthusiasm uh, in their eyes.